Hello and welcome to the JBM Sports Fanatic channel. Thank you for joining me for this video. And hey, we get to talk about the defending Super Bowl champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, TB12 and company. I mean, wow, you know, bringing in Brady, that proved off to be a tremendous pickup, but it didn't stop there, bringing in a couple other pieces, you know, from last year. And then this year, retaining a lot of those key pieces. That was absolutely huge for Tampa to be able to do that. And so what we're going to cover in this video is my projection, my personal projection for how I think the regular season will play out for these Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, in 2021. One um, and then at the end of the video, I'll go back through and then give you guys what I think is sort of like the ceiling of this Tampa Bay team, or you know, best case scenario, barring any injuries or anything like that. You know, without my um, my included upset. So first time around, we'll include my upsets. You know, this is my prediction, so we'll go off of that. But then at the end, you know, stay tuned for that, and then we'll talk about the ceiling of this Tampa Bay team. But man, I mean, this is a very good team. Obviously, that's why they won the Super Bowl, and being able to get these guys to buy in to say, hey, let's run it back. Someone like Chris Godwin, who could have went out there and probably made, you know, mad money. Now, sure, in this offseason, you know, there wasn't as much salary cap to go around as normal, so probably that played a role. But to bring Chris Godwin back, you know, and still have Mike Evans, and then, you know, Antonio Brown is the third option on a very, very, you know, low salary, consider what he could have gotten had things not gone south for him when he was with the Raiders and Patriots, you know, so bringing him back. So, yeah, at the receiving position, extremely deep. You know, and then Scotty Mil Scott Miller, we saw, you know, what he's capable of doing, being that fourth option and so forth. Just a ton of talent across the board for this Tampa Bay team, you know, up front, you know, being able to protect Tom Brady as obviously, you know, he's, you know, the oldest quarterback out there. So definitely protecting him is going to be key. But hey, Tampa Bay's proven that they can do that at a high level. And then at the tight end position, you know, you've got Rob Gronkowski, you know, Cameron Brait you know, O.J. Howard, you know, so, hey, you're stacked across the board. And, you know, even the depth behind Brady, I mean, I could go on and on about, you know, this, the addition of, you know, Kyle Trask. We'll see how that works out as that pick right there is going to be extremely important for the long-term success of Tampa Bay beyond, i say, three to five years. But we'll see, you know, how that eventually turns out and if he turns out to be the guy. But, hey, Tampa Bay is looking extremely solid, you know, Ronald Jones, you know, and also Leonard Fournette, you know, having both of them back, <laughs> absolutely huge. And on a defensive side, you know, we can go on and on with that too, but and Donegan Sue having him return, you know, um, and obviously, you know, you still got Devin White, you know, absolutely fantastic, Levante Davis, Shaquille Barrett, you know, absolutely huge. So the secondary, I expect that they'll be able to take a, a, another leap here. So I'm excited about this Tampa Bay team, honestly, you know, like what they've, you know, were able to accomplish throughout the draft as well. You know, some of my, you know, favorite picks, you know, early on, um, Joe Tryon, you know, out of Washington. Um, and then offensive tackle, you know, Robert Hainsey from Notre Dame. That was good as well, I think. And then, you know, we're talking about, Day three, I think they had a pretty solid day three as well, you know, towards the back end there, you know, Chris Wilcox, BYU, Grant Sturt out of um, Houston, you know, I like those picks as well. Um, so, yeah, across the board, tremendous offseason. But let's see what this translates to in terms of my predictions for wins and losses. Now, I have been pretty harsh, I will say, on a bunch of teams so far, if you look at the rest of my predictions throughout the season. So we'll see how Tampa Bay racks up in terms of my predictions and surviving that. But we'll start off now here with the opening game against the Dallas Cowboys. And, man, what an opening game that is going to be. We're talking about Dak Prescott returning, you know, for the Cowboys. They'll be hyped up. But, obviously, Tampa Bay being at home on that Thursday night, everybody watching that game, extremely huge. I've got the Buccaneers winning that one. You know, it's just going to be too much for the Cowboys early on. And we know how the Cowboys tend to do sometimes in these big games early on. But it's going to be an exciting one to watch. I think the Cowboys, they'll try their best out there. But the Buccaneers, they'll have that chemistry advantage and it'll pay off for them for sure. So I've got them winning that one. Now, week two against these Atlanta Falcons, 
I've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning against Atlanta. Obviously, no Julio Jones, and even if they had him, I'd still be rocking with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this one. Although, you know, last year, Tampa Bay was a wild card team, you know, so that's something to certainly consider in terms of just, you know, like, hey, this team, you know, they did great in the postseason. They got hot at the right time, but they still got to go out there during the regular season this time around and get Brady that first NFC division championship as I envision, you know, Tampa Bay is going to be looking to accomplish that. I mean, it would be a disappointment if they did not do that. Honestly, there's no other way around it. But week three, the prime matchup against the L.A. Rams here. I mean, you've got Matt Stafford now with the Rams, you know, um, obviously Aaron Donald and company, Tampa Bay going down to um, L.A. I've got the Rams in this one. I know Tampa fans, you know, you, you're going to say, oh, you can win this one. And you're absolutely right. This is one that Tampa probably, you know, they probably will win this one, you know. But I chose the Rams in this one. You know, these are my predictions. So, you know, try not to take it too personal there. But, yeah, I've got them winning that one and this one. And then against the New England Patriots, I've got an upset. I've got Bill Belichick sneakily finding a way to beat Tampa Bay. Now, I know this pick is going to upset you guys. You know, in terms of who's the favorites, who's the better team, Tampa Bay is clearly the better team. You know, they should be the favorites in this game. But I just feel that Bill Belichick is going to have something special in this one against um, Tom Brady and company for the Buccaneers. It doesn't help that Brady's dad has, you know, already been talking smack about the Patriots. I think they're going to remember that. And then, you know, it is early on in the season. So teams, it takes a while to, you know, get going sometimes in the regular season. Uh, But from there against the Miami Dolphins, Buccaneers are going to win that one Um, against the Eagles. Buccaneers going to win that one, you know, no doubt about that. Against the Chicago Bears at home, I've got Tampa Bay winning that one. And then week eight, going down to New Orleans, that's going to be a tough one right there. Um, Even though they don't have, you know, Drew Brees, but this team, you know, showed last year they're still a great team without him. I think they'll start Jameis Winston. So Jameis against his former team, Tampa Bay. I'll give the Saints an upset here. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Five and three starting off. You're thinking there's no way Tampa Bay is going to start off five and three. You're thinking I'm absolutely out of my mind on this one. Well, you're going to think I'm even crazier here when I pick the Washington football team to win coming out the bye week. Now, I know your things are going absolutely absurd. You're like five and four, even though last year in the regular season, that's probably about where Tampa was last year, honestly, as a team, you know, at that point. But, you know, after that, against the Giants, I know the Giants gave them a scare last year, but Tampa Bay is not going to fall for that. They're going to win that one. Going down to Indianapolis, that's going to be a tough one with their defense and stuff, but I've got Tampa Bay winning that one. Against the Atlanta Falcons, Tampa Bay, now week 14. That's going to be a big one. Josh Allen versus Tom Brady. Tom Brady used to beat him in the AFC East. That doesn't change now. Now that we're later in the season, I think Tampa Bay starts hitting full strides here on out. And then against the Saints at home, Tampa Bay, because now, you know, they're playing like they did last year when they pretty much activated at the right time prior to the playoffs against the Carolina Panthers. Tampa Bay again against the Jets. Yeah, Tampa all the way. And then at home against the Carolina Panthers, you know, you've got Tampa Bay winning that one there. So there you have it. I've got these Tampa Bay Buccaneers going 13 and 4 in terms of my personal prediction here going 8 0 at home five and four in a row, you know, and some of these, you know, like obviously I mentioned earlier in the video that I'll go back through now and these, and so I'll give you guys in terms of just purely if I wasn't including updates, you know, in terms of just who should win the game and the ceiling for this Tampa Bay team, I will go ahead and do that. Now the Washington football team, obviously this is one Tampa Bay can certainly win on the road and, you know, there, and then against the saints, that's one that they absolutely can win as well. Against the Patriots, you know, that's one that Tampa Bay can certainly win. And against these Rams, you know, this one I feel could go either way. And so I will say, you know, even though I feel that this is one that they could win as well. So I will say they could very well go 17-0, but that's so difficult to do. So I'll say the very ceiling for this Tampa Bay team is to go 16-1. and That is my prediction in terms of just the ceiling for this team, what they're capable of. You know, if everything comes out right, they're hitting strides right out the front gate, then expect them to go 16-1. and But if not, then, yeah, expect my 13-4 and prediction in terms of, you know, happening out, including upsets and stuff, should they get off to a slower start. But either way, these Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're going to continue to expand upon what they did last year. Last year, there was a wild card team, and, hey, Tune in at the very end when I do my playoff prediction to see if I have them winning the, the division. 
um, with a 13 and four record. I mean, 13 and four is a very good record. It's nothing to sneeze at whatsoever. The NFL is so hard. There's so many different things that you take into account. But at the end of the day, these are my predictions. And this is where I've got Tampa. I think they're a fantastic team. You guys should be really excited about your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's a lot to like, you know. I expect them to exceed, you know, my predictions early on, but we'll see how that works. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you guys for supporting the channel and see you guys next time.